Um, and uh, Paul and I would like to extend um, our thanks to Menorah Khan, our team member who has been able to join us. And she's actually taking care of our technology. So thank you again, Menorah. Um, so um, uh, uh, first of all, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the power of nature. And um, I'll give you a brief overview of the three of us so that you know who you'll be listening to. Um, I'm a former university professor and a senior research fellow with the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. I'm also a mindfulness meditation teacher, and I currently live on a forest preserve. So that's a little interesting fact for you to know. Um, I'm involved in designing unique nature connection programs for specific populations. And the EcoWisdom um, Forest Preserve has recently launched the Nature and Forest Therapy Certification Program. For more information, you can see our website. And I'm going to pass it on to Paul so he can introduce himself. Great. Thank you, Kari. And uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I am Paul Goche. I'm the Executive Director at the Individualized Funding Resource Centre. And I've had the honour of working with individuals uh, with mobility uh, impairments. Um, and supporting them being able to be able to fully participate in community. Um, as, as many people as they get older, or as uh, someone like myself who happens to be a person who uses a wheelchair, uh, accessing home support uh, and caregivers are something that uh, can be a real challenge and our organization supports people in being able to do that. Uh, the IFRC also has been working with Eco Wisdom and offering nature connection programs to path, pathways to independence group uh, of over 500 peer support, uh, a peer support network. Um, I'm also, just so you know, I'm a Paralympic athlete competing in the sport of bocce ball um, and uh, have been honored to be able to go around the world traveling in this with this sport. My big year was in 2000 when I won a gold medal for Canada so uh, in the sport of bocce ball so really happy to be here uh, if you're wanting more information about the Individualized Funding Resource Center uh, please don't hesitate to go to our website thank you and now I'll invite Manur to invite her to introduce herself thank you Kari all right everyone hello I'm Mehnoor. I'm an undergraduate student currently at U of T and I'm hoping to go into medicine. I am a personal support worker. I studied at Centennial College and ever since I got my certificate, I've been working with seniors at a nursing home, which has been um, a very big joy in my life. And I'm also an eco-wisdom research assistant and a facilitator. I'm also an artist, which is a fun fact, and nature is one of the big ways that I find a lot of inspiration to create my work. And of course, for any more information, you can always visit, uh, visit Eco Wisdom. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the power of nature and how it ca our connection to nature can support our well-being during COVID-19 and beyond. Next slide. We're gonna be talking um, after a few introductory comments about the context of COVID. We've all been through a lot. It's been two years, can you believe it? Uh, we're gonna review some of the research related to seniors, nature connection and well-being. And then Paul will talk about what is forest bathing and give you some examples. He's also gonna share Beth's story. And Beth is a senior who's very involved in our group and attends almost every single session. And she's also a resource person who comes to uh, our training uh, program as a guest speaker. So Paul's gonna share her story of how she connects with nature for her well-being. And then we're gonna give you a taste of three invitations, three nature connection invitations. And this is just a taste. Our programs are typically two and a half hours. So as you can imagine, we have enough time to really form uh, it, you know, a community and have interaction and even small group sharing. Um, but we really wanted to show you, not just talk to you about nature connection. 
and we will end with a outdoor tea ceremony. I'll hop outside uh, where we still have about two feet of snow and um, I'll be offering a concluding uh, white pine tea ceremony. We offer accessible nature well-being programs um, and Eco Wisdom and Individualized Funding Resource Center, we partner with an organization called Technology for Living. So this is really helpful because right now, a lot of our programs are online. And so they make sure that our programming is very accessible to people who live with disability or, or, or who are in various circumstances. We've been very fortunate to receive small grants uh, funding through the TD Park People Grants Program. And more recently, the federal government of Canada has offered us a, a Canada Healthy Communities Initiative Grant, which is fabulous. Next slide. We'll just skip through these. And I'm going to pass it on to Manhor. Thank you, Kari. All right. So we are talking about uh, nature and wellness and connection within ourselves. But I think it's important to kind of set the stage for why it is especially important to be doing it at this time. And of course, as Kari mentioned, we have been in a pandemic for the past two years. And during this time, there's been a lot of social isolation, a lot of anxiousness and depression, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of people from the youth to the elderly alike fear and grief, understandably, um, sleep and trauma and other stress that's related to quarantining and just isolation, um, and just not the best of mental health. There's a lot of different stressors that we have about managing our own health, our loved ones, war. And so this is the time when we really need to find something that we can deeply connect with and, and really find a way to reduce our anxiety and feel connected. And that's where this presentation will hopefully show you why our programs are, are trying to tackle all these different things. On. So one of the research um, conducted by Angus Reed Institute has shown that the effect of COVID has been pretty drastic. So you've got people that have been pulled apart 82%. Um, and then there's 79% who, who said that they bought out the worst in people, that COVID-19 bought out the worst in them. 61% of people said that their levels of compassion also weakened during this time. So all of these surveys are indicating that participants in our mindful nature connection programs feel a lot more relaxed and they feel a deep sense of connection and compassion for one another. So after our programs, we always send out surveys for people to give us some feedback. And so them feeling more relaxed and feeling connected and feeling compassion really, um, really combats the COVID's impact. Um, so we wanna give you a little bit of a sneak peek into what we do. I'm going to review some of the research so you have a bit of that information in your back pocket. Um, there's um, a field of research called forest medicine and it r derives out of Japan and it's been in existence for approximately 40 years. So it's relatively new but there still is, there are thousands of, of research studies in this field. In terms of physical health, research shows that this mindful nature connection which has been referred to as forest bathing or shinrin yoku. Um, it has, it actually, spending time, mindful time in nature can increase uh, the functioning of your immune system so that you can better fight off infections. It can also slow heart rate, lower blood pressure, lower blood sugar, and lower the stress hormone cortisol. It can also reduce the perception of pain. And this is something we've seen repeatedly in our programming. Now, one thing I wanna say is that the effect of nature connection is it has a moderating effect. So if you start out with, say, um, low blood pressure as you enter into a program, it's not gonna make your blood pressure even lower. It will actually raise it. And if you enter a program with high blood pressure, it will moderate it and bring it down. So it has a very individualized effect. And I find that just fascinating. Um, another field of research is around emotional health. And we know that this mindful nature connection can improve mood, perceived quality of life, 
and reduce depression and anxiety. Now, social connection is a whole other area, and it's one that we spend a lot of time with because it's been challenging with COVID. People have been in their own homes trying to protect themselves. And um, so we have designed these programs to really foster connection. And research shows that mindful nature connection can increase empathy towards one another, and it can also improve our sense of the importance of taking care of ourselves. And nature has this fascinating way of teaching us about interdependence. Now, in terms of cognitive function, oops, we'll just go back. Um, in terms of the cognitive function, forest bathing has been shown to not only improve sustained attention, so your ability to really stay attentive, but also to improve your memory. So it's interesting because we were earlier, there was discussion about people with dementia and um, there are things that we can do to uh, promote our health and um, and maintain our health, and uh, uh, this is one of those things. Now, you've probably heard of artists like Monet and Van Gogh, and they've created beautiful masterpieces. Well, I don't know whether you know this, but they used mindful nature connection, and often they would spend hours in the natural environment before picking up a paintbrush. And I'm sure you've also heard about art, uh, writers who go into the forest, maybe a cabin in the woods, and the words just start to flow. So this kind of na mindful nature connection can also support creativity. And for those seeking um, a spiritual uh, their spiritual, wanting to attend to their spiritual well-being, this is a wonderful practice. And now I'm going to very briefly go over three studies. The first one is a study where they looked at, uh, uh, they had two groups, they were looking at, it's, it was published in the Journal of Cardiology, and it was very medical. They were looked at a lot of um, biomarkers, the, you know, when you get your blood tests and they showed numbers here and numbers there. Well, these researchers looked at all kinds of numbers associated with the blood. And they had two groups of people and one went into a natural environment for a whole week, for seven days. And the other, they did similar activities, so they, it was called a control, and they were stayed in an urban environment. And then they, they did all this blood work and they found that Mindful Nature Connection raised, um, uh, improved um, uh, blood pressure indicators, uh, cardiovascular indicators that support health well-being, uh, tumor factors, so the, the, the work of the cells that fight off cancers, and inflammation biomarkers, so those, those things that might cause us to have achy and sore joints. Um, and improved mood on top of all of that. Can you imagine? Now, I know this is a study about spending a full week, but it is important, and, and it may not be possible for us to spend a full week, although I love the idea of creating housing with trees around and green spaces around, and that's, uh, you know, so it can be so powerful. But this, this study shows us what can happen when we do spend, when we have, quote, a high dose of nature connection. Next slide. Now in this study, they looked at virtual forest bathing uh, during COVID. And um, uh, they looked at um, two groups. One was looking at forest videos and the other group was looking at videos from an urban environment. And what they found was that those people that were looking at the nature videos, the forest videos, they had their anxiety much, much reduced. Now, this is uh, important to know that in this particular study, it was a short-term effect. So, um, uh, it was, they were watching, I believe it was a five-minute nature uh, video, and, um, and that was pretty much the entire experience. Now, with our programming, because we have two and a half hours, we actually invite people to connect. And if, for those of you who may have brought a house plant, I invite you now to um, sink your, 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 your fingers into the soil and, uh, and um, maybe feel the texture of the soil and also smell the soil. Um, so these are the kinds of things that we'll do in our programming 
And um, there are chemicals in the soil called geosmin, just so that you know, and it can also improve our immunity and our mood. So uh, you can keep that in mind the next time you go for a lovely walk uh, in spring. Um, yeah, so the difference between this particular study and what we do is um, this study looked at just looking at videos and what we do is we try to have people interacting with their house plants or even stepping out sometimes out into a backyard and connecting with a tree and then coming back and sharing about that experience. So we really try to create uh, uh, opportunities for people to breathe in what's called volatile organic compounds. Um, yeah, there's, the trees emit this wonderful uh, chemical called phytoncides. Uh, it's very powerful for our health. Next slide. Now, this is interesting. This is a, a, a study about seniors, forest bathing, and preventing dementia. What they found in their research is that forest bathing improved mental and emotional, um, uh, their mental and uh, emotional condition, and it also reduced their feelings of isolation and loneliness. And you probably have heard that in the UK, they have a whole department now of Department of Loneliness or something like that, because loneliness actually has all kinds of ripple effects and can affect our health in so many ways, physical and emotional. So when we talk about our programming and our emphasis on social connection, this is, can be a very powerful thing. And forest bathing, I've seen this over and over. People who haven't known, didn't know each other, they come together, they spend time together, uh, going through these exercises either in person or online and then by the end I often um, we will add a social time if it's online an informal social time or if it's in person I have like tea and snacks and people stay well people linger because they've made that social connection and they they enjoy it and so they want to stay a little bit longer um, so now the other thing that's interesting about this study is that it has they found that people were willing at the end of forest bathing to uh, engage in health related lifestyle change and um, make different choices. And they were willing to um, make changes in their life to make sure that they go for more regular visits to green spaces. And this is another thing we do in our programs is that we, we give people a taste and we offer um, learning techniques for connecting to nature and then we encourage people to go out and find a, a safe green space an accessible green space near near their home wherever they are and um, yeah and uh, so it this is a, this is a, a research study that says that you know what people are willing to make that lifestyle change next slide I'm gonna pass it on to Paul thank you Kari um... Forest bathing, what is it? Um, it's an opening of the senses through sight, sound, smell, touch. You can move your body slowly, breathing deeply, adopting a glaze, soft glaze, slowly strolling through a garden, park, or forest in any which way that you can do that. Watching fish in an aquarium, looking at nature, photography, photos, doing chair yoga on the outdoor patio, any kind of movement, reading a book in a courtyard, If you move to the next slide, I'm going to tell, I would like to share Beth's story with you. Beth is a senior who is actively engaged in our programs. Beth has always acted as a resource person for our nature and forest therapy certification training program. A couple of months ago, she was a guest speaker who came to speak to our trainees about how she made her indoor garden as part of her self-care routine. What I'm going to share now is based on her presentation. And I'm really glad that Beth gave us permission to share this story, her story. Beth is 80 years old and an active gardener. 
Oh boy, can she talk about her guard. Caregiver for her husband with leukemia and recognizing that that has been something that has been a challenge for her and her husband. Ferns bring back, bring back pleasant memories of time in nature. I wanna share some of the quotes that she spoke. From my garden, I get great pleasure. I totally absorb, absorbed in colors, texture and fragrances. It's a joy. As I walk by, I pause and I enjoy the way the light shines through the color leaves and immediately calms me and takes me to another place. With the social isolation of COVID, my garden has taught me to find pleasure in the smallest things. These are some beautiful pictures. I have been attentive to the light, temperature and water needs of each plant and they repay me with their constant company. Thank you. Over to Kari. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. And now we're moving into the part of the uh, the experiential presentation where you we're going to give you a little taste of a series of three videos um, that we have used in our programs. Um, we always first start with um, inviting people and I'll, I'll do this now. Um, I invite you to take three slow deep breaths and allow your exhalation to continue longer than your inhalation. So I'm going to say a few words and I just want you to practice this. This is a way to calm your nervous system. So one thing we do with um, our participants is we always emphasize that they can make modifications to these invitations. They are just simply invitations. And for some people, um, you may want to uh, um, make modifications to your setting and go on full screen. That's up to you if you want to see the video a little bit larger on your screen or you might want to adjust your volume. You can do these invitations in any position and any location. We've had people indoors and outdoors sitting upright, standing, moving if that's helpful. For example, those people who are feeling um, pain in their joints and need to move. And we also have had people who are laying down reclining. And um, also we invite people to use the chat feature or speak and they can have their cameras on, off or both. And a little bit later, we will be inviting you to share your, uh, your impressions of the videos. And at that point, if you wish to turn on your video, you're welcome to do that. We also emphasize that people can actually um, make, uh, we also begin with like an embodiment practice and we might show a movement of our arms. But for people who don't, aren't able to move their arms or don't wish to move their arms, we encourage people to visualize moving their arms. And we talk about the importance and the power of visualization and it's very related to nature connection. So next slide. I'm gonna pass it on to Menor. Oh, you're on mute. All right, all right. I'm just okay. That's better. All right, everyone. All right, everyone. So before we begin, I'm going to do this reading and I invite everyone to take three deep breaths as um, I say this short little poem by Rachel Carson. Those who contemplate the beauty of the earth find reserves of strength that will endure as long as life lasts. There is something infinitely healing in the repeated refrains of nature. The assurance that dawn comes after night and spring after winter.
Thank you. And now for the first invitation. What's important in forest bathing or mindful nature connection is um, first getting a uh, grounding ourselves so we can do that by connecting to the breath or that gentle sense of gravity pulling us down towards the earth. And then we adopt a soft gaze. In the research, they call it a soft gaze of fascination. And this is not a scientific or analytic uh, view. We're not measuring things. We're not counting things. We're just simply being present to nature. And so in this particular video, I invite you to be present to the pleasant. Our brains have a natural bias, a negativity bias. You may have heard this. It has helped us when we've been in trouble. Um, but what has happened is that there are so many potential dangers that our nervous system is on high alert all the time. And so we need to actually make a concerted effort to focus in on the pleasant things. And the more we do that, the easier it becomes. It creates new neural pathways in the brain. So while you watch this video, I uh, invite you to really expand that sense of pleasure for any image or little video clip that brings you pleasure. So what, what is pleasant to you will be different for other people, like everybody has their own thing. But when you come across an image that's pleasant for you, you can expand that sense of pl pleasantness by bringing a smile to your face or sighing, relaxing, <sighs> or placing a hand over the heart. So those are three things that you can do. And now we'll watch the video. It's about two and a half minutes long. Thank you. Now, um, we're going to um, show you a second video. We're just, I just invite you just to take a pause now. Just take it in. And we're going to show a second video. And then at the end of that second video, we will open it up and we will ask you some questions around 
what did you notice? you know, around your senses, maybe your body, your mind, emotions, um, these kinds of things. So we're just going to move right now into the second video and then we're going to have some time for sharing. If we had a full program, we'd actually have quite a bit of time for sharing right now after every invitation, but we've modified it so that you can have a taste and we can actually fit in three videos for you. All right, let's show the, the, uh, the, next, inv uh, sorry, the next invitation. is um oh and i'll just say so manure while you're getting where you're getting that up i'll just say um i took all of these pictures i hope that you're enjoying them and the videos uh, this is a little taste of what my life is like up here in the in the forest up in the north manure are you able to share screen again yeah great Now the thing about mindfulness, oh, the slide before this one, the thing about mindfulness is that um, it can help us um, be with all that is. So it's not about erasing things that are unpleasant and just focusing on what's pleasant, but it's about practicing connecting to what's present and being able to hold or be with what might be unpleasant too. So in this video, the, you'll notice that the, the, the mood of the music is a little bit less upbeat. It's a little bit more just present moment, neutral. And um, so you're, you're invited to open your senses and imagine scent and texture. We're using visual images, but often in the brain there can be a pairing so that one sense, the sense of sight, can trigger another sense, the sense of smell or touch. So I imagine, I invite you to imagine you're sitting on this rock, this lookout point in Algonquin Park at the peak of fall colors. I imagine you to um, feel the stone uh, under you. And, um, and I also invite you to look at the patterns in the leaves. Patterns in nature, whether that's a tree with branches that split and split and split, or whether it's the, the little lines in the leaves, these patterns are called fractal patterns. And we just, so when we softly gaze upon fractal patterns, it actually activates the parasympathetic or the rest and digest portion of the nervous system. So please enjoy this next video.
And now I would like to invite you to take a breath, take it in. And um, we're going to be asking you, what did you notice? Did you notice um, any particular color or texture? Any, any scene that particularly was pleasant for you? Um, did you have any emotions? Um, or did you have any sensations in your body that you might have noticed? You're invited to use the chat feature. And um, if that doesn't work for you, um, you can just unmute yourself and uh, speak. So um, I think we, um, we have a couple of um, participants. Um, maybe uh, Norma, would you like to go first? I, I see that or Sue, I see Sue oh, okay, as great. well unmuted. And Sue, did you want to say something? Well, I'm trying to keep awake to watch the video. I wonder whether the relaxation makes me feel sleepy. <laughs> so watching the video made you feel sleepy. Yeah. Yes, that's a sign of relaxation. It's a certain sign of relaxation. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sue. In the chat, Laurel says calming. And Sandy saying calm, happy. I was sitting there on that rock. Thank you, Laurel and Sandy. Hi, um, I guess you can't see me. Here we go. I wanted to add that um, I, I noticed the flame on the candle, which I have never seen before. And, and I also was more sensitive to the texture of the rock. And it really felt, um, it just felt very strong. And I felt like I was being held in, a, in just a lovely space. Thank you, Norma. Can I, do, can I just say that every time I see the video of the bird going on to the hand, taking the seed out of the hand, uh, it's it just a, an amazing connection to nature. Just my mind watching it, I feel like I, for me physically, I can't open my hand. So for me to be really there, present, when you got me to be really present, Kari, I just feel like I was there, part of it. Thank you, Paul. And, you know, this is something that um, is also, we design this with neuroscience in mind. When, when we are observing, um, for example, my hand in the snow and picking up the snow and um, um, letting go of the little snowflakes, or when I'm, I have a video of me touching the tree or with the bird landing on my hand, um, when other people are watching that, the same area of their brain can be activated. And this is called a mirror neuron effect. And so, um, yeah, it's one of the things that we consider when we're developing and designing these videos. It gives people like that, that embodied sense that they're there. Um, but it does require some preparation through, you know, taking breaths and maybe some mindful movement and, and listening to poetry before people are then ready to, to move into deeply experiencing uh, what is um, coming up on the video as, as their own unique experience. Thank you, Kari. We have some comments in the chat as well. Donna says, fortunate. And Ivy says, standing on top of the rock made me feel in control of my feelings on top of them. Thank you, Donna and Ivy. Wonderful. All right, are we ready for the next uh, invitation then? I think so. Okay, all right. In this third invitation, you're invited to listen to the sounds of wind, water, and birds. This, this video will be mostly silent. And um, this is often what we do in our programs as we move into a deeper, deeper sort of mindful state. And um, when we're allowed to then have the silence and not have the music, then we're able to hear, uh, in this case, very subtle sounds of wind, water, and birds. And um, these uh, three sounds, 
uh, with along with others, um, have been shown in research to activate that parasympathetic or rest and digest portion of the nervous system. So again, when we can feel calm and rested, when we start to yawn, when we start to feel tired, that is allowing our bodies the opportunity to do some really good restorative healing. Um, so listen to these sounds and also open yourself up with a soft gaze and take in the colors of blue and green. Um, nature is full of blue and green and when we have these colors in combination it can also activate that rest and digest portion of our nervous system and allow us to calm. And again coming back to our context of being through the pandemic and having complex stressors, including the war, just all these things, caregiving responsibilities or managing healthcare, anything we can do to calm the body allows our body to do some really important healing work. So I, I invite you to imagine yourself there. You'll see your, uh, that there's a canoe and I invite you to jump in on board as we go through a wetland. And at one point we'll come across a great blue heron. I, I invite you to imagine the sun, the warmth of the sun on your skin and maybe the breeze as well. And you may find that it brings up memories or even a certain image or scene has a metaphorical, it represents a meaning or a message for you. So we'll just move into this third and final invitation, this video, and then we'll um, do a little, a little share opportunity afterwards. All right, everyone. It's Kari. If Kari's not here, I can just take the lead on facilitating this. Um, what did you guys think about that video? Were there any things you noticed? Any senses? Any memories? Any metaphors that came to mind? Anything that caught your attention and made you linger? And how did that feel as it went through your body? Feel free to hop in the chat or just unmute.
Did it bring back any memories specifically? If you saw the canoe and the water, if there's anyone that has any memories they want to share. Hi, Donna. Go ahead, Donna. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, just two things. Uh, I have a canoe and I canoe in Falls Creek. And not only is it marvelous for me, it's marvelous for all the people on the shore who speak to us, who wave to us, who speak to us, and you get smiles everywhere. So it's almost like when you're in a canoe, uh, you have um, the mindfulness of the other people, not just your own. It's quite, quite awesome, actually. Met amazing, amazing people. So thank you. Thank you. Um, just looking at the, the solitude, and we've actually had a seal follow us all the way back to where I, I keep the canoe in False Creek, all the way. So it was like, um, it, just looking at the canoe, I was thinking again, how fortunate uh, we are that we do have waterways to canoe in. And that even though you're doing it yourself, somehow, somehow the mindfulness and the quiet of the canoe quiet and the mindfulness and other people and the other thing is I used to live in Sedona Arizona and we used to walk once a week we walked in silence uh for an hour and a half and wow is that ever an experience and a half in the red rocks in in the woods so that's another thing I, I would recommend is is that when people get into nature that you do it not talking just silent and then you can hear all the marvelous all the marvelous things you miss. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot. It was wonderful to hear it and share it and to experience it. Thanks. Thank you, Donna. Are there any anyone else who wants to unmute and share their experience? We have a couple of comments in the chat. I can read those. I have White Blossom. I think this is from the first invitation who says calm, beauty seeing vibrant colors, wanting winter to be over despite the beauty of the scenes. So this is from the first invitation. Thank you, White Blossom. As for this invitation, Sandy says, a reminder to slow down. Memories of what I enjoy most. Mm -hmm. Kim Agar says, happy childhood memories on the family ranch. Marjorie says, the video reminded me of my walk around Bur Burnbury Lake, Burnaby Lake. White Blossom says, that would surely help me to sleep. Spiritually, how nature can connect us to what is real. Quiet appreciation. Very, very true. Darshan says, mesmerizing. Very calming and relaxing. And Laurel says, the sound of the water and the birds call me. Sorry about my phone. <laughs> Are there any, is there anyone else who wants to share any memories that came to them or any other comments? While Kari's preparing the tea ceremony, we can move on to some of the quotes that we received when we um, put out the surveys for after our program. So after our program, we let's uh, let our participants give us their thoughts and what they enjoyed most. And these are some of the comments that we've received. People say, I became relaxed, cheerful, hopeful, and my pain subsided. Learning to use nature, which is a free resource, to build my resilience and give me the tools to bounce back from the pandemic and other stressors in my life. Our programs have helped people find the time to take out a bit for their own self-care. And the forest imagery lessened uh, my anxiety. Group meditation also reduced my social loneliness. Someone said the time seemed to slow. And another comment, which is on the tea ceremony, which you'll be seeing shortly, they said the candle lighting and the tea ceremony, I felt a spiritual and emotional sense of letting go of the grief I've been holding on to. The tree meditation made me think about being rooted in our past, living in the present, but reaching for the future as time passes. 
And our last quote here says, this program makes no demands or judgments and offers the participant the opportunity to find quiet, respite, and solace in the beauty of nature. And we hope some of you were able to relate to some of these comments that we received through this very short program that we've had. Um, Looks like Kari is ready for us. Oh, wonderful. So what I'll do is I'll stop screen sharing here and I'll spotlight Dave right here. And can everyone see Kari with her beautiful tea ceremony set up? I'm here outside. You'll see that we still have ice and snow. Um, <laughs> not too cold, actually. It's kind of nice to come out without my big parka on. And uh, we have some chickadees around. So I was just seeing if they wanted to come and visit. They may. Um, I'm going to put the seed here. We'll see if they come. Um, so now is the time, uh, and we always conclude our programs with a tea ceremony. Um, today I made some white pine tea, and um, it's a nice way to conclude um, a Nature Connection program, um, especially if we're in person. And sometimes if we're not in person, I invite people to make themselves a, a cup of herbal tea. Um, and so I'm going to pour the first cup of tea. You can see the steam coming off uh, in the in the, the thermos here. Um, our last program, it was minus 35. <laughs> um, and I threw the tea up in the air and it froze into mist. It was quite magical. It was also evening, so all the all the candles were lit. Um, so as you can imagine, um, this is a nice atmospheric way to conclude our time together. It's a nice ritual. So I offer, I'm just gonna stand up here. I offer this first cup of tea to the earth, to the source, to the resource um, that offers us so much. And now, I'm going to um, cap, pour myself a cup of tea. Um, do you want one? Sure. Actually, the, my husband behind the screen, I'll offer him some. And um, I'm just gonna describe what it tastes like and what it smells like. I can smell the white pine and, hmm, it's, it's hotter than I expected. And I can taste the, the pine too. It's uh, a nice, uh, nice scent and smell. And the um, thing about uh, white pine is uh, tea, is that it's very high in um, vitamin C. So as you can see, oh, candle went out here. Um, I always enjoy making the little mandala, the arrangement here for, um, uh, our concluding tea ceremony. Um, just gonna pass, um, I guess uh, at this point, I believe we're doing our concluding comments. Is that right, Paul and Menor? Yes, we can start. Yeah. Yes. And just before we do our concluding um, comments, I just want to thank each and every one of you for, um, joining us today and um, a little taste of what uh, nature connection can look like. I'm going to pass it on to MK. Sorry, Manuor. Thank you, Kari. MK is also fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you everyone for joining us today. And, you know, we've used these nature connection programs to complement other forms of healthcare. Um, so whatever you're currently doing for your health, this is an additional complement to that. So adding this is a great way to
We seem to have lost Manur. And we oh, yeah. do this using a peer support model to form a community and a friendship. And all together, that provides an immediate, free, and safe form of mental, social, and physical health support. Thank you for sharing this experience. Okay. okay. Thank I you think. very, thank you very much, Manur. Uh, your connection started to lose there. Um, and um, I, I just want to remind everyone, uh, you know, that you can do this. Um, we can do this indoor. We can do it outdoors. You can do it alone. You can do it with your family or friends. We hope that you've have been able to be inspired to consider making mindful nature connection a part of your regular practice of self-care. It has been a big part of my life, a new part of my life actually, and I've seen it transform the lives of others. It has been a powerful way to build communities and care during, during challenging times, especially among people who might otherwise be isolated who are dealing with many forms of stress. We hope to see you at one of our programs in the near future. We're gonna make sure that you have the information about how you could join us. Finally, we want to thank Dr. Mary Lou Herring, Herring and Christine Barakans who invited us here today. Kari Manur and I are pleased to have had this opportunity to contribute to the Providence Health Dialogue on Aging. So thank you.